Africa fights for their cause and ours. Beyond the known narratives of the World War II lies an unfamiliar chapter in the records of history. Africa, a continent often relegated to the peripheral in historical accounts, actually played a pivotal role in the war. In the jungle, the Japanese just like a snake. Mm, hiding back. From the dusty battlefields of Alamein to the lush jungles of Burma. Died. So many people died. And it was very, 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 very uh, uh, African soldiers fought valiantly alongside the Allied forces. I'm about to jacket so to blow. Ah. Then I realized I was in trouble. Even as African cities and ports served as critical hubs for supplies, refuge and strategy. In this video, we would delve into the fascinating stories of Africa's contributions to the World War II and celebrate the bravery, resilience, and sacrifice of the Africans. Join us on a journey to rediscover the forgotten history of Africa in World War II. Apart from the general name, the World War II, each major conflicting side has its own term for the war. To the USSR, it was known as the Great Patriotic War. Japan called it the Great East Asia War. And to Europe, it was the European War. It was one of the many wars between Europeans, but with most of Africa under European control during the war, the continent became inevitably entangled in the global conflict. For example, Libya was an Italian colony bordering Egypt where British troops have always been stationed to keep the control of the Suez Canal under Britain. When Italy, led by Benito Mussolini, declared war on Britain and France on the 10th of June 1940, it led to an inevitable military campaigns in North Africa, pitting Italian forces against British and Commonwealth troops, and which was the first involvement of Africa in World War II. This part of the war referred to as the North Africa Campaign, through series of advancement and retreats, expanded from Libya and Egypt to Tunisia, Morocco, Algeria, and Chad. Some soldiers from Africa, such as Libyan Arab forces, South Africa, Morocco, and Tunisia, joined the war for their own reasons. For the Libyan Arab forces, the leader popularly known as Idris of Libya was fed up with Italy colonizing his territory and viewed the British as a lesser devil, therefore made agreement to be free and independent after the war in exchange for the support of his troops in the North African campaign. Other Libyans, like the Savari, who were the local colonial troops, fought on the side of the Axis, and about 28,000 of them fighting on horses suffered heavy defeat at the Battle of the Marmarica. Tunisia and Morocco, which were both French colonies, took both sides as well. In the case of South Africa, they contributed fighters and assistants under the umbrella of Commonwealth, which included others like India, New Zealand, and Australia. Then also the Native Military Corps. The campaign ended May 1943 with the Axis forces surrendering to the Allied forces in Italy, losing its colonies in Africa. Meanwhile, within the period of the North Africa campaign, there was a two-day war and conflicts in parts of West of Africa. The major one is called the Battle of Dakar, it happened in September 1940. The Battle of Dakar occurred for this reason. Since the Nazis had seized and is in control of major part of France at the early stage of the war, there were disagreements on who is to hold the control of French West Africa colonies. The Free French or the Vichy government controlled by the Nazis? West Africa was important to both warring sides in the war. First, the region provided raw materials and supplies for the war and its ports served as crucial refueling and staging grounds for ships traveling the Atlantic. Second, it's going to be a source of troops' contribution to the war sooner or later. Therefore, it's important to have control of it. The control of French West Africa was automatically in control of the Vichy government since Nazis took over France. Therefore, the Free French forces led by Charles de Gaulle attempted to take control of Dakar, the capital of French West Africa, from the Vichy French government, which was collaborating with the Axis powers, but the Free French ultimately failed. They didn't stop there. There were other minor conflicts they created at Abidjan, Conakry, Senegal, and Gabon till 1943, when they finally defeated the Vichy government in West Africa. 
On the east of Africa, when Africa was shared among the colonial powers, Somaliland was divided between Italy and Britain. Therefore, we have Italian Somaliland and British Somaliland. When Italy declared war on Britain in June 1940, war did not only broke out in the north of Africa, but also in the east. This includes Kenya, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and the colonies of Somaliland. The Italian army invaded the British Somaliland and forced them out of the area through the sea. That was in August 1940 at the Battle of Tugargan, lasting five days. In early 1941, the British army reinforced and recaptured Somalilands and head forward to seize other areas controlled by the Italians. November 1941, Italian East Africa completely came under the control of the Allied forces. In all the mentioned campaigns and some others to be discussed, African soldiers worked as medics, labor units, artillerymen, and as infantry soldiers. They were also grouped into units and divisions, some of which were mainly Africans and others, alongside Europeans. One of such units was the King's African Rifles, formed as far back as 1902 to carry out internal security duties in British East Africa colonies. At the beginning of the Second World War, there were more than 22,000 members in total, and 20,000 of them were Africans, with more recruited later during the war. In the East African campaign, they fought against the Italians, against the Vichy French government in Madagascar, and part of them Burma. The Savary soldiers. These were Italian colonial troops. They were cavalry soldiers from the Arab Berber population. They fought in the North African campaign on the side of the Axis power, but suffered heavy defeat at the Battle of the Marmarica. Royal West African Frontier Force was a homogeneous force established at the beginning of colonialism to garrison the British West Africa colonies. People were recruited from West Africa, which includes Nigeria, Gold Coast, Sierra Leone, and Gambia. In 1939, the RWAFF was transferred from the control of the colonial office to the war office, and it saw expansion of its size from six to 28 battalions. They served during the Second World War against Italian Somaliland, Abyssinia, and Burma. Native Military Corps. In South Africa, Native Military Corps was created in mid-1940, and it was done to make up for the shortage of white soldiers in the region. Its size was around 80,000 black soldiers from South Africa. They served in Egypt, Libya, Madagascar, and Italy. Senegalese Tirailleur. Senegalese Tirailleur existed as far as 1857. They are French colonial army recruited from Western, Central, and Eastern French colonies, and they fought for French during various wars. During the Second World War, there was around 200,000 active Tirailleur, and some of them were deployed to France. This constituted about 9% of the French army. When talking about African soldiers that were heavy victims of racism during the Second World War, the Senegalese tirailleur might have been number one. As the German forces advances through France during the period, Senegalese tirailleur and other soldiers from African origin, captured, surrendered, or wounded, were separated from French soldiers and killed. In one event called the Chasselet Massacre, some French soldiers surrendered after exhausting their ammunition. The captors took out about 50 Senegalese tirailleur among them, executed them, and drove tanks back and forth over their body. Sudan Defense Force formed in 1925, and with about 5,000 Sudanese to support the British Army in the colonial activities, it was expanded in 1940 when Italy joined the World War, numbering up to 20,000 Sudanese natives during the war. To the northwest Libya, to the east Eritrea, Italian Somalia, and the occupied Abyssinia, now Ethiopia. They took part in campaigns against Italy in Eritrea and North Africa. Libyan Arab Forces this is a force that consists majorly of Libyans who sought refuge in Egypt while Italy was colonizing Libya. They were also known as the Senussi Army, and they volunteered to aid the British in the North African campaign. In general, armies from each unit and battalion all served under European officers and had limited chances for promotion. Treatments of African soldiers during World War II are often met with mixed feelings. For example, it is common to hear reports and interviews where the veterans complained about being treated poorly during the war and after. They lamented about racial discrimination, not receiving medal recognition, 
and other entitlements after the war. There are also few cases of veterans from other units reporting various medals and awards they received and ceremonies held to honor them. This suggests that treatments might have differed from unit to unit. One part of the treatment that is constant is the fact that the war gratuities were generally lower than that of the white colleagues. In fact, three times lower. These soldiers were recruited through voluntary and coercive means. People who joined voluntarily were motivated by sense of patriotism and duty. Instances are the Libyan Arab forces and some Ethiopian soldiers whose land were occupied by Italians, while some desire for adventure. They saw military service as an opportunity to contribute to the war effort and potentially travel beyond their home countries. Many of them can be found among the Royal West African Frontier Force. Some found it as an escape from unemployment. Example is the South Africa Native Military Corps, where 52,037 signed up in Transvaal area, where people couldn't farm that year because there was drought. Other areas in the regions with no farming issue contributed between 4,000 and 9,000 men. In cases of coercion, there was something that could be referred to as colonial quotas and chieftaincy system. By this, colonial government of both France and Britain would give a specific number of recruits each parts was to produce. This was implemented in areas like Tanganyika, Uganda, Kenya, and other places. Incentives were given to rulers who met their quotas, and this led to conscription in some places. In 1941, the West African pilot featured a popular statement, Death Knows No Color. It is estimated that between 1 to 1.5 million Africans fought in the war. The exact number of African soldiers who died in the war is difficult to pinpoint due to incomplete records and the fragmented nature of colonial archives. However, the estimates range from 50,000 to over 100,000 fatalities according to various sources. At the end of the war, most of the units were scaled down and later disbanded as each country gained independence. The soldiers were used to form the nucleus of the new independent countries. At this point, Let's listen to some interviews of the African soldiers who participated in the campaigns. First of all, we went to the, okay. the cake, kill our people. Nine Africa, two European. Mm -hmm. yeah, 47 wounded. 47 wounded. Mm -hmm. Nine Africans, two Europeans. Yeah, mm -hmm. 47 wounded. So what now after you took them back? Uh, well, uh, uh, we withdraw. Okay. You withdraw. Okay. Then, make a refreshment. Okay, you made reinforcement. Reinforcement. Okay. Yeah. On the flight day, night. Okay. The plenty, they say nobody will pass. Okay. Which is the for, for five years. Okay. Well, we can't, we can't them. Only three hours. Three hours? Yes. Is the for, for night to twelve night. Okay. Yeah. And where? Then, mm -hmm. uh, Nigeria, mm -hmm. troop. We second brigade. GKR glucose. Not the guy like the other time. They call them glucose. The defense brigade. Then, three marcher. You will upgrade your second brigade to first brigade. The Gadget, the Nigeria troop. One marcher. Five euro, every kill one. Then, it means that he kill five Europeans. Then, the following money, uh, okay, uh, as I was in case of the French West Africa, I what happened? happened. <laughs> what did happen? Japan would take over for French, at the French division. I told them that we can wish Africa and go uh, Most of them, uh, American troop, India troop, British troop. Okay. Then I see we take over. I will start fight for Mount John. Get the rise of Mount John and beat it down. Canada Valley. Canada Valley. Okay, we get it from Japan. Okay. Akiap. We take the first West Africa. 
Mm-hmm. If I feel the gate. Okay. Then, bring them to King of Z. Mm-hmm. King of Z is a heavy battle. Mm-hmm. But he will die lucky, he will push them again. As the darkness of war spread across Europe, thousands of men, women, and children were either forced out of their homelands or fled in search of safety. However, in contrast to the widespread talks of refugees fleeing to the United States or Great Britain during the time, many Europeans also turned to a less likely destination, Africa. From the scorching deserts of North Africa to the lush savannas of East Africa, European refugees found unlikely havens in the colonies of Africa. This section of the video explores the fascinating and often forgotten stories of Europeans who sought refuge in Africa during World War II and their experiences in the course of the war. It is 1939 and Germany had invaded Poland from the west. Few weeks later, the Soviet Union invaded it from the east and Poland was divided between the two. The Soviet Union forcibly relocated hundreds of thousands of the Polish citizens, their men, women, and children, to labor camps in the Soviet Union. This happened in different waves. Estimates suggest that around 1.5 million citizens of Poland were deported to Soviet labor camps where they faced harsh conditions, forced labor, and high mortality rates. Later during the war, Germany also attacked the Soviets, seizing part of its territories, And since both Germany and Soviets are now adversaries of each other, the Polish government in exile, with the help of the British government, reached an agreement with the Soviets for the release of all Poles. Two categories of people were released. People fit for soldiering and people who are not, which includes women, young children, and the old. This second category of people first moved to Iran as they couldn't return to their homeland because of the war. As time goes on, due to the large population and military situation in Iran, the place was not safe for them anymore. The British government, therefore, helped in relocating them to East and Central Africa. They were hosted in camps in several African colonies, which includes Northern Rhodesia, Uganda, Tanganyika, South Africa, and Southern Rhodesia. An estimate of 20,000 Polish in total. At these camps, thousands of Africans were employed to build the camps for the refugees, and few more were conscripted. Hundreds worked maintaining the camps, fetching water, cutting wood, carrying food, guarding, cooking, and emptying latrines. Other countries that migrated into Africa during that period includes the Greeks, Czechs, and Yugoslavs who fled oppression, famine, and the war. These particular groups occupied mostly Egypt, Ethiopia, and other places depending on how far they could go, while some Jews who escaped persecutions fled to Morocco, Tunisia and Algeria, which were under the Bashi government at that time, but they managed to survive. After Italy's surrender in 1943, some Italian soldiers and civilians also seek refuge in Libya and Egypt. Around 50,000 to 60,000 people in total seek refuge in Africa while the war lasted. Refugees in the camps and other locations face numerous challenges, which includes tropical diseases, and the psychological trauma of displacement. Despite these hardships, they were able to find safety and stability during the war years. In the heart of Africa and beyond, where the drums of war once beat, lies the graves of heroes who fought for a world they never knew. During World War II, thousands of African soldiers enlisted to fight for the Allies, few others for the Axis leaving behind their families, cultures, and homelands. Many never returned, their bodies also laid to rest in foreign soil, far from their ancestral lands. In this part, as we talk about some notable African soldiers who were recognized for various acts of valor in the war, we also pay tributes to the brave African men who sacrificed their lives during the war by briefly exploring the Second World War cemeteries within and outside Africa and memorials that honor their ultimate sacrifice, shedding light on a chapter of history that has been overlooked for far too long. Job Maseko served in the Native Military Corps during the war, where he fought in the North African campaigns. His garrison surrendered to Axis forces at a point during the war. While he was a war prisoner, 
He sank a German warship loaded with ammunition using a milk can, and the Italians in charge were unable to figure out who did it. He later escaped the prisoner's camp, traveling through the desert for three weeks to rejoin another South African division and assisting them to defeat his captors. He was later awarded a military medal for sinking the ship. Another soldier, Barry Ghazi. At a battle in Bardia, many were wounded at the middle of the battle from both sides in the field, and fire was being exchanged. A call was made for someone to volunteer and go to the enemy line with a Red Cross flag to deliver a letter requesting a temporary truce so that both sides can carry their wounded and tend to them. Barry Ghazi volunteered and was able to deliver the letter with a wound in his leg while he was returning. Despite being wounded, he refused to be treated and went back to the battlefield to attend to the wounded soldiers during the period of the truce. As the war went on, he sustained injury in four different places on his body inflicted by the explosion of a grenade. Due to this, he couldn't walk, but he used a boat paddle to support himself and kept working. He was awarded a military medal for these acts. Stephen Johannes was a driver, a member of the Cape Corps. At a time during the war, he was transporting 30 German prisoners of war when he lost contact with his convoy due to the dusty weather. Trying to find his way back, he entered a minefield and got the vehicle wheel blown twice by mines. When the vehicle was beyond repair, he had to lead the prisoners out of the mines and guard them throughout the night. At one point during the night, a German prisoner attempted an escape, but he shot him and later led them all to a railway line where he was able to transport them to the camp. Although Stephen's act was regarded, he didn't receive a medal for it. Despite all this bravery and heroism, the gravity of the war cannot be overstated. Somber undertakings and sacrifices were made. Its effects on Africa and Africans are far-reaching and profound economically, politically, and in terms of human lives. An estimated 50,000 to 100,000 Africans died fighting in the war, and they were buried both outside and within the continent. Many cemeteries were also made in different parts of Africa, which hosted fallen heroes from all parts of the world, most of which are being managed by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. For example, in Egypt, El Alamein War Cemetery, which houses up to 7,000 graves, Tobruk War Cemetery in Libya, Majez El Bab War Cemetery in Tunisia. In East Africa, there is Kigali War Cemetery, Addis Ababa War Cemetery, and Dar es Salaam War Cemetery in Tanzania. They are present in West and South Africa as well, like the Accra War Cemetery and the Bachwana Military Cemetery in South Africa. It is very important to note that this are just few I'm able to mention, and all these cemeteries includes graves of soldiers from countries like United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, India, France, Poland, Africa itself, and other countries. While bodies of some African World War II veterans were buried in these cemeteries, Many others couldn't make it home and were buried outside the continent, especially in Burma, now Myanmar. Aside the cemeteries, special monuments were built in several places, including Africa, to remember those who fought and died in the war. This includes the Remembrance Arcade in Lagos, Soldier Idumota, and World War Cenotaph Lakoja. Africa's involvement in World War II was a pivotal moment in history, marked by both immense sacrifice and significant contributions. As the war ravaged the globe, Africans from diverse backgrounds and countries rallied to support sides of the war. Significantly, the Allied forces, fighting against tyranny and oppression, their bravery and resilience helped shape the war's outcome, while it also laid the groundwork for the continent's eventual decolonization and independence.